so uh, today we'll start with this design of bolted joints so uh, as you know this uh, bolted joints are uh, actually this uh, joints which are detachable joints right so this is not a uh, permanent joint right so this is uh, actually considered as the threaded joints right which can be separated right as in when required so it can be disassembled right so uh, there are various types of uh, this uh, bolt right, as it is mentioned in the figure uh, this through bolt then uh, tap bolt and stud so as you can see uh, the difference is uh, here in case of this uh, through bolt the bolt uh, is throughout uh, the plates which are being joined right suppose if this plate 1 and 2 are being joined with the help of this bolted joint so in that case uh, this uh, bolt is uh, passing through the length or you can see the thickness of this both plate and at the end it is being uh, fastened with the help of this nut right so this is actually bolt head right and you will have threads right uh, which will be uh, utilized for making this uh, joint so after that this tap bolt it means uh, here in the second case the uh, one of the part which you are joining with the help of this bolted joint will have internal threads right so that is why it is known as this step bolt so this particular component let us say are having internal threads right and here again you will have this uh, bolt head and here you will have thread in this uh, particular portion of the bolt and here nut is uh, not required Right, while well the last is the stud as you can see here in this case you are having uh, the thread uh, at the end of this uh, particular uh, length of uh, this stud stud is basically cylindrical uh, uh, what we can say component which are having threads at it both both ends this end as well as uh, this end right so at both end it will have uh, threads and generally it is found in this engine blocks and all this kind of studs right so you will have this uh, thread uh, and here you will have again tap right and here uh, at the other end you are going to use this nut in order to have joint right so this is how you will have so this is how you are having this various types of this bolted joints right apart from that uh, actually uh, you are having screw also in screw generally you are not using uh, nut right simply you will have the internal threads on the mating part so you can have the cap screw and then uh, st uh, what we can say set screws and all are there uh, there are different types of it are also uh, discussed right but uh, we are not yeah. discussing all this uh, different yeah. types of Mitra kaha kaha hai? sorry Love you. mute yourself hello okay so now uh, so those types of sorry. cap screws and types of set screws are also there it is given in that uh, book of that uh, bhandari but we are not discussing all this at length uh, so we are coming to directly this bolts of uniform strength now uh, what do we mean by bolts of uniform strength actually whenever any load is applied on this bolt so as you can see here you are having this threaded portion as you can see right and here you are having this uh, shank diameter right so basically whenever we apply any load it will be distributed among this threaded portion and the shank portion so in threaded portion as you can see the diameter is not uniform right diameter is not uniform in this threaded portion and here stress concentration will also be there right. 
So here you will have core diameter and major diameter or nominal diameter that you will see uh, the terminology of threads, right? So here you will have a core diameter uh, which will have the highest stress in this case. So if the highest stress is in that region, then the maximum amount of uh, the energy bared or the strain energy absorbed will be by that particular portion, right, of your uh, this bolts. And in this shank diameter, as this diameter is larger than this, the capability of absorbing that uh, shock will be less in comparison to the threaded portion. Actually, uh, this is not desirable because as we can see, along the length of uh, the bolt, we are having uh, a variation in uh, strength, right? Or we can say stress applied, right? So, uh, actually, uh, this portion of uh, your bolt will uh, go under failure at different stress and this particular portion of this uh, bolt will go uh, at failure under different stress that is why uh, here you are not having uniform strength but in order to achieve the uniform strength generally this uh, shank diameter is made equal to the core diameter of the threads right or you can also have a hole as uh, it is mentioned in this figure right of diameter d1 which will be uh, helpful in attaining the uniform strength to throughout the length of the bolt now uh, if you see that how this uh, d1 is achieved then if you can see uh, this pi by 4 d square right minus pi by 4 d1 square can be equated to that pi by 4 dc square right oh, how, why we have equated this because we want uniform strength right so uniform strength will be uh, that stress into area so we have equated area of this both portion right this portion and this portion right at this portion the uh, stress will be calculated with the least diameter that is this core diameter and here you have now this uh, relation or this area right left in this region pi by 4 d square minus pi by 4 d1 square so if you simplify this then you will be able to calculate the required diameter d1 which will give you almost uniform strength throughout the length of the bolt so this d1 can be calculated from under root d square minus dc square right so Here, what is this D and DC? D is the nominal diameter, right, or major diameter of thread, while this uh, DC is core diameter, right, or the least diameter, right. So, uh, this is how you are having uh, your diameter D1, which is required to be drilled in order to achieve this uniform strength in your bolt right so after that if you see uh, this terminology of screw thread then this major diameter and minor diameter as we have discussed so, right so yes uh, so the uh, best stress consideration of the threaded portion will be uh, uniform how can it be uniform and threaded portion sorry Stress concentration of the thread, uh, you have written the uh, stress concentration of the threaded portion is uniform, isn't it? No, 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 no. What, what we have uh, discussed is the strength of the bolt should uh, remain uniform along its length, right? So, okay, here, so. yeah, so here, whatever uh, stress is going to be failure in this region, also the same stress should be uh, failure. That is why. This goes of uniform strength we are uh, preferring, right? Are you getting? So, uh, are we sorry. So, uh, so we reduce it. What, what, what are we doing to uh, reduce the stress constant? Make it uniform. See, uh, here we are not uh, reducing stress concentration, right? What we are making sure is whatever maximum stress is uh, generated right in the portion of threaded region will be the similar uh, in the region uh, where the threads are not applied along the length of the bolt. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, so we uh, uh, we 
uh, will we do anything to make it uniform? So uh, that is what I mean, we have done. Now we have calculated the diameter of D1, uh, which needs to be drilled, right? So that the uh, what we can say, the stress generated in that uh, region will also be similar to the stress uh, appeared by that threaded region. Okay, so uh, as there is a field that given in the uh, region, uh, so sorry, on uh, the second figure. Uh, on second figure, there is a fillet region uh, nearby. Uh, uh, sorry, which figure? We have given three figures. Uh, I mean, A, A B, C. Uh, is it uh, uh, different steps? Uh, that, uh, so, what I ask is, uh, A and B and C are the different uh, stages. Is it like different stages? Or uh, is it is different A, B, C. Uh, different construction of your bolt a b and c are different construction of bolt in uh, figure a your bolt is manufactured with shank diameter as d right and you are having your thread uh, configuration or thread characteristic as it is it will have that major diameter as d and that uh, uh, what you can say that root diameter as the dc so what will happen in this case is your this threaded portion will have a higher stress uh, resulted because stress resulted uh, in this different region will be given by P by A, right? If you say this as uh, uh, let us say P1, A1, right? Here you will have yes. the same force but area will be A2, right? So A2. Yes. Right, so in this region 1, stress uh, experience will be more in comparison to the region 2. So that uh, strain energy absorbed will be more in the region 1 in comparison to region 2. Right? And stress value yes. will also be higher in the region 1 than region 2. Right? What we want is whenever any force applied to the bolt, it should be uniformly distributed along the length of the bolt. Right? That is desirable. So there are two different things you can do, case A and case B, right? Case A is you are reducing the whole shank diameter to that DC, right? So the maximum stress generated here is based on that pi by 4 DC square, right? So that is one option, right? Yes, yes, so that the uh, stress generated will be similar throughout the length. The second option is B, that you are drilling the whole of diameter D1, so that you make that area which is equal to the pi by 4 dc square. So the stress generated will be again similar to the region of the threaded region. And uh, hence you are getting the similar strength of both the region. Are you getting? Yes sir. Right. So these three are different, uh, what you can say, uh, method of manufacturing gold. Right. One is uh, keeping this uh, shank diameter uh, throughout the length of bolt where threads are not there. The second is you are reducing that uh, diameter to DC, right? And third is you are drilling a hole. I guess it is clear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now terminal sir? Of screw, yeah. Sir, please explain the third case, sir. Yeah. So third case again, as I have told you. Uh, this we are considering as region 1 and this as region 2 so our aim is to have similar stress generated in both the regions right you are applying yes, the same load to both the regions so if area will be same then stress generated will be same it is obvious right yes sir yeah so here in region 1 the minimum area on which uh, the stress is going to be generated or stress is going to be reduced is pi by 4 c square yes sir Right, and in the region 2, the area is pi by 4 d square minus pi by 4 d1 square, right? D1, yes sir. Right, so from this relation, you can get the required diameter d1 needs to be drilled in the region of this shank. Right? Yes sir, yes sir. Right. Okay. Yes sir, thank you sir. Okay, okay. So now, next is this terminology, right? So in this uh, terminology of screw thread, as we can see, you will have this major diameter, minor diameter, right, and then pitch diameter, this thread angle and pitch, uh, this all are very common things, right, crest and root, crest and root will be difference in case of external thread and internal thread, right, in internal thread, 
you will have root where in external thread you will have crest right so vice versa in this uh, external thread this is external right and this is internal so here crest is at this point right while well, here root will be there at that point in case of internal so this is how the terminology of thread is there right then you have this iso standard right here again the same thing is discussed but with some uh, uh, relation right it is discussed and then this designation of this screw thread is there generally this uh, fine series you are using this m6 by 1 so it means it means 6 is uh, the diameter of this uh, uh, what we can say head and this nominal diameter or major diameter is this 6 and this one is the pitch right so this is some uh, preliminary things regarding here uh, this threads right and bolted joints now Sir. yes Sir, why mostly you should be isometric iso thread and the include angle 60 degree not here remaining the ACM thread or knuckle thread butter thread why most you should be include angle B thread of it 60 degrees only sir uh, actually in this uh, whatever the strength is achieved is I guess uh, optimum that is why we are generally going for this metric thread as it is mentioned here 60 degree in ISO standard right because uh, you are providing this fillets and all are also in order to reduce the stress concentration in the threaded region right okay sir. okay so for now if any force is applied on this bolted joint as it is mentioned in the figure then uh, the stress generated will be this load applied upon the minimum area which is as we know at the uh, what you can say the core diameter 5 by 4 dc square right and we also know that this tensile stress is given by the tensile strength of material upon factor of safety right so from this you can come up with the strength of bolt like this p will be equal to 5 by 4 dc square into the sigma t can be replaced with syt upon factor of safety right now when a nut is uh, uh, pressed against this uh, uh, bolt threads then it is going to experience some shear uh, stress right and the shear stress will be experienced at the core diameter again the dc right and uh, let us assume the uh, height of nut as h so if we assume the height of nut as h then area available will be that pi dc into h Right, and as we are discussing about the shear stress, then it will be tau, and tau is given by shear strength upon factor of safety. Right, so uh, again, uh, as you know, the shear strength will be half the ultimate uh, this tensile strength. So you can still uh, go for simplification that that is 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. Right. Now, if you uh, compare this 1 and 2, right, then uh, you will uh, come up with the relation between the height of the nut right, and this uh, diameter DC. Because as you can see, if you compare this 1 and 2, that is pi by 4 DC square SYT upon FS will be equal to this pi DC H into 0.5 SYT upon FS so now if you simplify this then uh, you will have this DC equals to or you can say this H equals to 0.5 DC right and as we know this dc core diameter is 0.8 times the nominal diameter right so through this you will come up with this height of nut equal to 0.4 times the nominal diameter right generally the nut are being built with the height of 0.8 times nominal diameter right so 
based on this you can uh, calculate this simple numerical right so in this so uh, what it is uh, asking is an electric motor weighing uh, 10 kilo newton is lifted by means of an eye bolt as shown in the figure the eye bolt is screwed into the frame of the motor the eye bolt has coarse threads it is made of plain carbon steel 30 c8 right and uh, the factor of safety is 6 determine the size of the bolt so here it is uh, very uh, simple right so whatever we have uh, discussed right based on that uh, you can attempt this uh, question so how will you start anyone stress is equal to force by area sorry uh, 10 kilo newton divided by area yeah 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 so, uh, uh, stress you will say that stress, whatever tensile stress generated, will be the force divided by area. And as you know, area we will consider at the core diameter. So, that will be pi by 4 dc square. And this stress will be uh, whatever the maximum stress is given, that is, or strength is given, tensile strength, that is 400 divided by factor of safety. Right? and you also know the load right which is given as 10 kilo newton so now having all this uh, details with you you can come up with the dc right so what is dc anyone Thirteen point eight. Yeah, it is uh, mm. almost thirteen point eight or thirteen point two mm. Right. Once you have DC, then you can go to the nominal diameter. So nominal diameter is DC divided by point eight. Right. So that will give you around seventeen point two seven. Right. So you can uh, take it as almost eighteen mm. And in the ISO standard, it will come to that M20 series. Okay. So, is it clear? So, uh, sir, if we have to consider the shear strength, uh -huh. then uh, the area will be the uh, 2 pi R L by 2 because half of the portion will be of other thread. Sorry? Sir, मतलब कि अगर shear stress को consideration में करते हैं, तो area will be like two pi r into h by two. Area will be the pi d h only, ना? Shear area will be. Sir, shear area for the the given bolt will be half because half of the portion. Here we are here we are directly considering this tensile strength only, right? Sir, if we are to consider a shear uh, strength, then uh -huh. it will be half of that, na? Uh, 2 pi r h by 2. I guess, uh, no, it will be the same actually, that pi d h will be the area that you have to consider for the shear stress, because the whole area is going to resist uh, that uh, particular force, right? Or it will be generated so as a think full area, right? Sir, in shear strength, uh, I mean for shear strength, the shear strength will be half of yield strength. Ah, that is correct. No, uh, sir, I am not saying that. Here he is telling something different. Uh, sir, because the portion in which the thread is present is almost half of the... Because there is no portion in the middle of the thread. No, no, no. It is not like that. It will be different, right? The shank length and the thread length are not always half and something like that. It is not like that. O okay, sir. Okay. okay, okay. So, let us go to the next one. Right? So, in case of this uh, eccentrically uh, loaded bolted joint, we have to go uh, through some similar uh, things which we have seen in that welded joint, right? We have to transfer this load to this geometric center right this 
P and along with that the moment generated because of this force it is applied at some eccentricity so you will have this moment P cross E as we have done in that welded joints right so uh, here in this figure it is uh, given that if you are having a system of 5 volts then you have to go for actually calculation of this x bar and y bar as you know that sigma ai xi upon sigma xi and for y bar it may be sigma ai yi upon sigma yi if it is the case then uh, you have to go and calculate first the geometric center and then you have to transfer the load to this uh, the center of the uh, geometric center right so uh, here in this figure 7.16 you are given this symmetric system so this g will lie at the center of this uh, portrait system 1 2 3 4 so you can directly uh, transfer the load which is acting at some eccentricity e to this particular center g right but along with that you will also have this uh, moment generated that is p into e now having this situation what uh, you uh, or what this particular joint will experience is primary and secondary shear stress right? primary and secondary shear stress will be generated right primary and secondary shear stresses will be generated the first will be due to this force right which is going to be equally applied on all the bolts so this p by number of bolts right that will be applied to this all four bolts right that is p1 p2 p3 p4 right and the other force secondary force which will be obtained or which will induce because of this moment which we have transferred right due to eccentricity so here you will have this p1 dash r1 p2 dash r2 p3 dash r3 and p4 dash r4 so here if you see uh, here they have considered some different notation right instead of that p1 and p1 dash here it is p1 dash and p1 double dash right so let us go with that only right so let us not have any confusion so here they have written like this for uh, primary it is p1 dash for secondary it is p1 double dash right so as you can see this uh, p1 double dash or p2 double dash or p3 double dash or this p4 double dash all are uh, acting perpendicular uh, to the distance from the cg right here it is acting at this r1 so the moment generated will be this p1 double dash into r1 and it is going to oppose the moment which you have transferred to the center that is p cross e right so at each point it will be in this direction which is going to oppose this clockwise which we have transferred to the this, uh, center so for p2 double dash also it is in anti-clockwise for p3 double dash also it will be in this anti-clockwise similarly for p4 double dash also it will be in anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise as this is clockwise all the other moments will be counterclockwise moment right so now the thing is this uh, particular uh, force p1 double dash or p2 double dash are at, uh, varying according to the distance from uh, this particular uh, geometric center this g right or center of gravity the g right so for, uh, so that is why this p1 double dash can be mentioned as c r1 or as it is varying proportional to the distance from that uh, centroid so p1 double dash is actually varying as r1 if r1 increases it will vary so p1 double dash can be written as c r1 and so all other right p2 double dash can be written as cr2 p3 double dash can be written as cr3 p4 double dash can be mentioned as cr4 right so if you put all this uh, equation or all this uh, relation in the above equation right then what you will get this p into e equals to uh, as we are replacing this p1 double dash with cr1 what you will get is this c r1 square so here p1 double dash will be c 
CR1 and already we are having this uh, R1 right so as already uh, we are having that R1 then th it will be CR1 square similarly CR2 square right CR3 square and CR4 square now from this actually you will be able to get the value of this C so then C can be written as P cross E upon this R1 square, R2 square, R3 square and R4 square. So if you put the value of this C into all that uh, P1 double dash, P2 double dash, P3 double dash then it will be P E R1 right upon R1 square, R2 square, R3 square and R4 square because it is C R1 and C is P E upon R1 square plus R2 square plus R3 square plus R4 square similarly you can write for P2 double dash, P3 double dash, P4 double dash and so on right whatever number of words uh, we are using so from this uh, understanding you can calculate this simple problem here the structural connection shown in figure 7.16 is subjected to an eccentric uh, force P of 10 kN with an eccentricity of uh, 500 mm from the CG of the bolts. The center distance between the bolts uh, 1 and 2 is 200 mm and the center distance between bolts 1 and 3 is 150 mm. All the bolts are identical. Right? The bolts are made from plain carbon steel. The factor of safety is 2.5. Determine the bolt size. Right. So if you see here I guess this figure is itself the 7.16 right which is mentioned in that uh, particular uh, what you can say uh, problem right so I guess and now it will be easier for you right right so now you can attempt this problem right yes so how will you start uh, finding primary shear force and secondary shear force yeah so uh, you can start calculating that uh, primary and secondary shear force primary uh, shear force will be this 10 kilo newton by 4 right yes sir right so this primary for all will be this p1 p2 p3 p4 it will be equal to this 10 kilo newton by number of folds so that is 2500 newton right then for secondary shear force as we have derived it will be same in all right because here is electricity is there so P E R 1 square upon R 1 square plus R 2 square plus R 3 square plus R 4 square please mute yourself so here R I guess uh, you need to calculate first right so if you consider this suppose this uh, let us say if you are considering this P1 double dash which is acting this then this will be the R right or R1, R2, R3, R4 all will be R only but you have to calculate this based on the data given so what is mentioned as this distance and this distance So between 1 and 2 is 200, right? So this distance will be 100. 
and between 1 and 3 is uh, 150 so just distance will be 75 yes correct right if this 1 2 3 4 the distance between 1 and 2 is given as 200 is 1 2 3 and 4 so distance between 1 and 2 is given as 200 1 and 3 is given as 150 the distance from here with this r you are going to calculate then this will be 100 this will be 75 yes or no yes sir so here in this equation this r1 r2 r3 r4 all are r only actually right so it will be p e r upon 4 r square so it will be almost equal to the p e upon 4 r r you can calculate with this data p e and p e are already provided so you can tell me what is this p1 double dash Ten thousand? Ten thousand Newton, yeah, correct. So as uh, all poles are at equal distance, uh, we need not to find that which bolt is uh, under maximum force, right? So at all it will be same. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the resultant force, right? So how can you calculate that resultant force? P1 double dash will be having uh, components, right? This P1 dash is the acting opposite to this, right? As you can see, this P1 double dash is acting at certain angle, but this P1 dash is acting opposite to this force, right? P. So this will make uh, the same angle, right, as the angle made by this theta here, right, whatever uh, this theta will be, the same theta will be here. So this theta can be calculated with 10 theta, right, 10 theta can be equated as 75 by 100. So? Sorry? So, how will we determine this uh, direction of P1 dash and P1 double dash? See, P1 dash is the simple, it will act directly opposite to this applied load, right? And how yes, P1 dash is identified or how the direction of P1 dash is identified is, as we have seen earlier also, as this P1 is acting in this direction, when you will transfer it to this G, it will generate movement in clockwise direction. So, P1 dash should have the direction which is going to generate the moment opposite to this P cross E, right? So, then this is the only direction, right? P1 double dash can act so that the moment generated is going to be in the opposite direction to this P cross E. Are you getting? Yes, sir. Okay. So, based on this, now uh, what uh, you can have is uh, this uh, theta you can calculate as we have discussed right 75 by 100 so from that uh, you can have this uh, p1 double dash cos theta and p1 double dash sine theta So, what is theta? Sir, 36.86. 36.86 or somewhat like that, right? So, yes, sir. Yeah. So, basically, once you have this theta with you, then your horizontal component and vertical component will be this P1 double dash cos theta minus P1 because both are in uh, opposite direction to each other, right? So, this P1 double dash cos theta minus P1 dash, right, 
प्लस दिस क्यू वन डबल डैश साइन थीटा कंपोनेंट विल बी स्क्वेड एंड टेक एन अंडर रूट इन ऑर्डर टू हैव रिजल्टेंट राइट here as we are considering this p1 dash and p1 double dash so p1 will be the resultant Actually, we need to calculate at uh, point two also to make sure that uh, whatever p one is coming is uh, similar to that or having some difference. So, what is uh, the p one is uh, eight three eight one three nine, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let us write for this p one eight one three nine point zero nine, sir. Yeah, yeah. It is almost equal to eight one three nine something meter, right? Now, yes, if you consider, but, what, sir, but our focus should be on the highest. I mean, which one is the most low? Yes, 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 yes. So, let us go for P two also. In case of this P two, what do you think the direction of force? Can anyone tell? One thirty-five degree from x axis, I mean, like this, horizontal. Like this, right? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes, sir. Correct, correct. So here in this case, this P two is actually directly acting at uh, that angle theta only, right? Is uh, whatever we have calculated this theta, right? Yes or no? Yes. Right. so as this p2 double dash is acting at the angle theta right so this sorry this actually here here to here let us say so no no not this angle will not be theta sorry let me write this here it as here we have considered this angle as theta right this one with vertical so here also this with vertical this will make that angle theta whatever angle is made here right the same will be made with the uh, vertical so p2 double dash cos theta now is going to be added to this P two dash because here we are having P two dash right and this P two double dash cos theta so in case of uh, that bolt one they were in opposite direction P one dash and P one double dash cos theta but here in case of this P two both are in the same direction are you getting what I am saying hello yes sir yes sir so if you calculate this for P two then For P two, resultant will be this P two da double dash cos theta plus P two dash square plus P two double dash sine theta square. Yes. So from this you can have your P two. So what is uh, P two? So this P two dash and P two double dash are same as P one dash and P one double dash, right? P two dash is twenty five hundred and P two double dash is ten thousand. So, can you tell me uh, what are you getting as this P two? Twelve thousand ninety three. Yeah, correct. So it is around this twelve thousand ninety three, right? Approximately. Once you get this, you can uh, check or you can observe that this P two is greater than P one, right? So 
this bolt 2 and 4 will experience the highest load so based on that shear stress generated will be higher at this point so if you consider this tau is equal to this p2 by a then tau is given is 80 right and uh, you have calculated this p2 as let us say 12093 then divide by pi by 4 dc square so it will give you dc so what is dc Uh, 19.87 sorry uh, 13.87 sir yeah it is almost about this 13.87 again if you will go for major diameter then it is dc by 0.8 so it will give 17.34 yeah, yeah. So, okay. so again you can go for this m20 right so this is how you are having uh, your selection of bolt right based on uh, the different forces right and different stresses which we are considering primary and secondary shear stress right once uh, you are done with this then one more case you can consider that if this uh, load right which is eccentric uh, is uh, perpendicular to the axis of bolt right here you are having this axis of bolt so in this case load acting is perpendicular right? as you can see load is acting here and the bolt axis is this one right so it is acting perpendicular to the bolt axis right so this front view and side view is mentioned in this figure a right so now what happens when this uh, load is going to act so in that case uh, here this bracket will undergo deflection right and this uh, deflection will be uh, actually uh, what we can say uh, proportional to the distance from this uh, particular point C as it is mentioned here right so uh, here also you will have primary and secondary shear stress right but here also as you can see this number of bolts are four right here but uh, they have mentioned uh, both lying at similar location as one and other as two so this P1 dash is equal to the P2 dash will be again whatever total load applied by number of bolts this will give you primary shear stress right so uh, once uh, you are done with uh, the calculation of this uh, primary shear stress then you need to calculate the secondary uh, shear stress right uh, but here uh, as uh, what we have first observed is this deflection is proportional to the distance from that point C right so delta 1 is proportional to means delta 1 is more in comparison to delta 2 because L1 is higher than this L2 right so now using this uh, uh, particular uh, what we can say uh, a dependency you can also derive that forces are also uh, proportional to this uh, distance from the uh, this point p would point c how because as we know this force is proportional to stress right because uh, this force is given by stress into area right the stress is dependent or it is proportional to strain right this sigma is equal to uh, the science model is into strain right and then again strain is dependent on the deflection right or you can say stretch right so that this deflection or stretch is again delta by L right so again this delta has come into picture which depends on that L1 right so you can also write that secondary shear force will also dependent or proportional to the distance from that particular point uh, C right so as uh, we have written that P1 double dash is equal to CR1 in previous case here also we can write that right 
so once uh, you have this then you can actually uh, again right as we have gone for that equilibrium of moment here also you can go for equilibrium of moment right that pe so if you write for equilibrium of this moment pe then it will be equal to 2 times this p1 double dash l1 plus 2 times p2 double dash l2 because this two bolts are there at that position right and if you put this cl1 and cl2 then what will you get you will get it as this 2 c l1 square plus l2 square so from this you can actually write what is c that is equal to p p upon 2 l1 square plus l2 square right so once uh, you have uh, this value of c it will help you in calculating the secondary forces right that is p e l1 right upon 2 l1 square plus l2 square and so on you can write for the p2 dash also that is for p2 double dash also that is p e l2 upon 2 l1 square plus l2 square right so as we know with uh, this uh, particular forces which we have calculated in this case uh, this uh, force p1 dash is going to generate a shear right in the bolt right as you can see here this uh, p1 is going to be opposed by the force p1 dash and p2 dash which is going to generate shear right while uh, the force which is opposing this moment right will be in this uh, direction right so as it is uh, this clockwise movement again p cross e right so uh, the force generated due to this uh, uh, moment which is going to oppose it right will be in this direction here and in this direction here because then only it can oppose the moment generated so this force will be uh, in the form of this tensile force right so it will generate tensile stress so in this case you have to consider uh, this different thing right because the nature of uh, stress is different so here tau will be this p1 dash by a while this sigma t will be this p1 double dash by a right so once you have the value of the shear stress and the tensile stress then you can use either MPST or MSST right as per the material used right so this MPST will be with this uh, sigma t by 2 square plus tau square plus sigma t by 2 right while the shear stress will be simply the sigma t by 2 square plus tau square so this is how you can have the sigma 1 and tau and then again you can check it with the maximum uh, stress with uh, that factor of safety right so this will finally give you the sigma 1 max and tau max as this 0 0.5 20 upon factor of safety so this way you can uh, calculate the stresses induced in the case of the force or eccentric load applied perpendicular to the bolt axis right and from this you can uh, calculate this simple numerical right the following data are given for this bracket in 7.20a again i guess that is uh, what we have seen that only that shift so here whatever we have seen this figure 7.20a is this only right so you can now i guess it will be better for you to correlate right so here uh yeah the data provided is the load applied is provided then this eccentricity is provided then l1 and l2 is mentioned then uh, there is no preload 
right? And the bolts are made of plain carbon steel. Factor of safety is 2.5, right? So using the maximum shear stress theory, so it is mentioned already, right? Because plain carbon steel is ductile material, right? So specify the size of the bolts, right? So what you can do is you can uh, try and attempt uh, this question, right? So how will you start again? You will start with uh, this uh, primary uh, uh, force and secondary force, right? Which will generate this shear stress and tensile stress. So what is this uh, P1 dash and P2 dash? Uh, 6250. P1 dash and P2 dash equal to 25 kilonewton, right? Yeah, so 6250 divided by 4 because 4 volts are there, so 6250 Newton, okay, and that is correct, then next, next is P1, next is this P1 double dash, right, so how will you calculate that? See, moment about point bolts one are going to be uh, subjected for maximum uh, force right because it is farthest from that point c that is clear right here are you getting what i'm saying this pel1 upon this 2l1 square plus l2 square we need not to calculate for p2 double dash because l2 is less than l1 yes or no yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, so this P E L1 upon 2 L1 square plus L2 square. So all the data is with you. You can directly calculate P1 double dash. So what is this? Eight one zero eight. Yeah, it is almost around eight one zero eight, right? So once you have this P1 dash and P1 double dash, uh, so you will have <coughs> respectively this tau and sigma t so tau is the 6250 divided by a right and sigma t is 8108 divided by a correct so and you are asked to use you are asked to use the maximum shear stress theory right so once you have this tau and sigma t with you you can find tau max how how you can calculate tau max for MSST? Can anyone? This way you can calculate, right? Uh, uh, sir, what is tau max of the material? Tau max uh, is uh, actually uh, given right? <laughs> or from the data you have to calculate. Because what provided what is provided is ultimate tensile strength and factor of safety. So from that you can calculate this tau as this 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. Uh, so so what are the tau max. Yes. What are the value of SYT and FS? SYT is 380 and FS is 2.5. Okay. So you can calculate this tau max that is anyone 70 sorry 76 sir yeah it will be 76 newton per mm square yeah so once you have this then you can calculate the area because sigma t and tau both are in terms of area right so this will give you area. So what is 90. Yeah, it will be around 98.02. So once you have area, you can equate it to uh, that. What we can say uh, this pi by 4 dc square, and then you can calculate d. Right. 11.17. 11.17. That is dc, huh? Dia dia. So. 
DC na core diameter right yes sir yes sir then you have to calculate d that is dc by 0.8 Eleven point something, right? And then D, which is DC by point eight. That is thirteen point nine six. Sorry. Thirteen point seven five. Thirteen point seven five. Thirteen point nine six. Huh? So say. Thirteen point nine six, right? So it is almost coming that M sixteen, right? So. Actually, from area also directly you can come to this uh, M16 if you have that standard design data, right? So this is how you can design your bolt, right? Now the last is this uh, eccentric load in circular base. So here, in case of this eccentric load in circular base, uh, as you can see here also we will have. Uh, this uh, delta one, delta two, delta three, delta four, right? And here also it will be proportional to this distance L one, L two, L three, and L four, right? So uh, here also the same procedure you can carry out. Uh, here again, this uh, this force will be proportional to this distance, right? So uh, what you can do is uh, you can again. Uh, Transfer this P into L. Here the eccentricity is given as L, right? So P into L will be equal to this P1, L1, P2, L2, P3, L3, and P4, L4, right? Now uh, again, as we have discussed, this P1, P2, P3, P4 can be replaced with C L1, C L2, C L3, C L4, right? And as previously we have derived here, also you can derive that P L is equal to P L L1. Upon L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square that you can derive here also, right? Now the thing is, what is L1, L2, L3, and L4? So if you see this uh, figure, then here this L1 is actually this, as you can see, this uh, this diameter is 2b. So distance from here to here is b. Right, and this angle is given as alpha. So, what this angle is given as alpha, and this outer diameter is 2a, which is mentioned here. Right. So, if you calculate L1, then it will be this a minus, a minus b, b cos b. alpha. Right. So, similarly, you can calculate for others also. This L2 will come a plus b sine alpha, because here it is again alpha. Right, and A plus this uh, B sine alpha will be there. So similarly for L3 and L4, also you can write this A plus B cos alpha and L4 A minus B sine alpha. So once you have all this, you can put this sir, value. Uh, right. Sir, L3 to 2A minus B sine alpha will be there. That is similar to A plus B cos alpha. Whatever you say, it is same. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right, because here it is this alpha, right? So if this B is here, this is alpha, then this is B cos alpha, right? Of this three point three, which is equal to this A plus that B cos alpha, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. So yes. Sir. Once you put all this in this L one square plus L two square plus L three square. Plus L four square. What uh, you will get is this four a square plus two b square. Right. So this is how you will get your equation for uh, this particular P one as this P L L one is a minus b cos alpha. Right. Divide by this four a square. Plus 2b square can also be written as 2a square plus b square, and 2 you can take out as common. Now, if you want to generalize this equation, then you can divide and multiply by 2, which will give you this 2 pl a minus b cos alpha upon this 4 2a square plus b square, where 4 is the number of volts, right? 
so uh, you can generalize that in case of the circular plate you can define your that force p1 as 2 pl a minus b cos alpha divided by n 2a square plus b square right now here if you uh, what we can say go in detail how this force is varying with respect to alpha then for cos alpha is equal to minus 1 it means when alpha gives minimum value of cos alpha your p1 will be maximum right and at that point if you write this p1 then it will be this 2 pl a plus b this is maximum right because you are taking cos alpha's value as minimum so this way you can get this p1 max right so uh, this is how you can have uh, this sir, p1 p3 will be maximum sorry p3 will be maximum sir so no we are discussing uh, particularly for p1 then when p1 is going to be maximum when this oh, okay. alpha will be minimum at that time p1 will be maximum right so for that we have written here okay Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. So, actually, you can also uh, write that alpha in terms of that what we can say uh, that 180 minus beta, right? And then that beta is actually going to decide that what are the number of bolt placed in a particular region, right, of that half uh, circular plate. So, if you go for that uh, definition of alpha, that is 180 minus this uh, beta right where beta is for equally spaced number of volts so for that 180 minus is 360 by 2n where n is number of volts so this will uh, give you that force alpha can be if you put this value and give simplification you will finally come with this force alpha is equal to minus force 180 by n so you can replace cos alpha with minus uh, cos 180 by n also in your this equation right so you can write that 2pl a plus b cos 180 by n right and divide by this whatever n 2a square plus b square whatever you have derived right so with this you can also see uh, this uh, simple example right here a round flange bearing as shown in figure 7.26b is passed into the machine frame by means of four cap screws uh, spaced equally on a 300 mm piece diameter the diameter of the flange is 400 mm external force is 25 kilo newton located at a distance of 150 mm right two double pins to take uh, shear load Right, and the cap screws are relieved right, of all shear forces okay then determine the size of cap screws if the maximum permissible tensile stress in the cap screw is limited to 50 newton per mm square so again here figure this 7.26.b is uh, this one right so let me take this uh, figure for you so that it will be easier for you to calculate right so now with this uh, you can start right whatever you have discussed yeah so you can see how uh, the different forces will act right yes so how will you start this you can find that P1 max, right? Here A is 200 and B is 150, right? As you can see, your diameter is given as 400 and 300. So A and B are radius, right? So A will be 200, B will be 150, number of volts will be 4. Right. L is given as uh, 150 again. Right. 
so I guess everything is with you now, right? I mean that P1, right? Because P1 is what? Sir, uh, how was the expression of B2 we got? We got one P. P cos 180 by n. N to the U square plus U square. Right. So once uh, you have this relation. Then it will give you this P one. So here it will be same for all. So we have calculated for only this P one, right? Hello. Yes, sir. So, can you tell me what is P one? Anyone? Five five nine eight, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is around almost five five nine eight. Right, Newton. Right. So uh, now, what you are going to do is you are going to equate this right to that stress into area, right? Five by four dc square into stress, which is given as fifty newton per mm square. So if you uh, uh, go for it, then you will have DC. So what is DC? Eleven point nine three. Yeah. Okay. Then you can find that shank diameter, right? Which is T equals to T C point eight. Fourteen point nine two. Fourteen point nine two. Okay, so almost 15 you can consider. Right, so this is how you can calculate the size of your bolt required. Then let us see some of the gate questions. Right. So in this case 2001, it is asked that a bolted joint is shown in the figure. Right. The maximum shear stress in the bolt A and B respectively are. so we need to calculate first the forces and then you will be able to calculate the uh, stresses correct yes sir here the size of the bolt is provided already right so the very first uh, thing is uh, calculation of this primary and secondary uh, forces right so if you calculate this pa or p dash a primary right primary will be same for all right this 10 kN by 3 yes or no yes right And yes then, sir yeah and then uh, in case of this f uh, or what we can say p double dash a 
it will be equal to what? One eight seven five zero. Okay, but uh, it is this P E R A upon R A square plus R B square plus R C mm. square, right? Here, actually, uh, you are having the values of R A and R B, right? But R C uh, R A and R C, right? But R B is zero because the system will have this center at center of this B only. So R B will be zero. Right? R A and R C is given as this forty. Right? So you can calculate this by putting the values. This ten it can be to three into this one fifty into this forty. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So here it is this ten into ten is to three, right? Into one fifty divided by into forty divided by this forty square plus zero plus forty square. So it will give you this eighteen seven five zero newton. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it is similar to this PC double dash also because both are at the same distance. So uh, now, uh, if you consider the forces, see here what is going to happen is this moment will be transferred as F into E or P into E will be in this direction, right? So the stresses uh, generated uh, at A and C, right? will be uh, going to opposing this moment so if it is in clockwise then here it will be uh, in anti clockwise like this right and if it is in no it will give clockwise right? sorry so this will be hmm, at a it will be in this direction so that anti clockwise and at c it will be in this direction so that again anti clockwise right here also here also so basically what i wanted to say is here this at c and a the angle between these two forces is 90 degrees so directly you can get the resultant force at a equals to this pa dash square plus pa double dash square correct yes yes sir yeah so tell me what is this resultant at a 19.043 okay so it is 19.04 kilo newton right here this is newton here it is kilo newton okay so now once you uh, have this uh, stress at uh, this particular point right uh, this is sorry this is load at this point so for stress uh, how will you calculate the stress how will you calculate the stress at a and c right both at this both place it is same only so how will you calculate tau max at a let us say this force by divided by pi by 4 B square, right? Two forty-two point four seven. Two forty-two point five, or whatever, right? Four seven mega pascal. Right. This is at A. So now for B, they have asked you at A and B both, right? So if you go for B, 
it will be only this 10 by 3 kilo newton right divided by this 5 by 4 d square so what is this Forty-two. Yeah, it is around forty-two point four two megapascal, right? Forty-two megapascal. So from this, you can see at point B and A, you are getting this forty-two and two forty-two. So uh, at A and B, it is asked, right? So at A, it is two forty-two. So this is correct. Option A is correct, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So then. The next is this one. So here a steel bar of 10 by 50 mm is cantilevered with M12 bolts to support this 4 kN load, right? Primary and secondary shear load and then resultant shear stress on bolt P. Right. So can you attempt this? It is also easy, right? Yes, so calculate this. So primary shear force is 2 kN, right? 4 kN will be divided into both. Yes or no? This primary here P dash and Q dash, right? Let us say force at P dash. I am directly writing, let us say this FP dash is equal to this FQ dash is equal to 4 by number of volts, that is 2 kilonewton. Now it is FP double dash, let us say. So, what is uh, this FP double dash in, in to R1 by this whatever this force P e into R1 by R1 square plus R2 square R1 square plus R2 square so here what are the different things force is given as 4 kilo newton distance is given as 1.7 1.7 right then sir 159 pascal are you are finding uh -huh. force right it cannot be in pascal uh, sir, sir, sir. so this 4 into 10 raised to 3 into this uh, 1.7 right into this r1 is what One thousand eight hundred. One thousand eight hundred. Uh, it is almost near to twenty kilo newton, right? Uh, sir, uh, sir uh, yes, sir. F P double dash system. Actually, this one point seven into ten raised to three, I am writing because all other dimensions are in mm. So here the distance will be two hundred, right? This R one. R1 and R2 both. How will we calculate the diameter of holes? E itself is 2 meters, sir. Sorry? E itself is 2 meter. Uh, from the center of matlab, areas of P and Q. Okay, okay. Ha, 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 ha. It is 1.7 into this uh, 3. Plus right, 1.7 right, right, plus right, 0.1 plus 0.2. Correct, correct, correct. So. Actually, you can write this 2, right? Into 10 raised to 3. Correct? So, how will we calculate R1 and R2? R1 I mean, diameter of bolts. R1 and R2 are not diameter of bolt. It will be the distance from this 3, right? What we are going to decide. R1 and R2 are the distance. Okay. Right. So, yes, sir, 200 and 200. So, yeah, that will be 200, right? 2 into 200 square. So, from this, you will get this. Uh, 
secondary force so what is this secondary force this 2 2 will go right this 200 200 will go right let us say this uh, 200 will go to this so the 20 kilonewton right 2 into 2 where this 20 into 10 is to 3 yes or no correct yes sir. right so this way you are having uh, the first answer is 2 kilonewton and 20 kilonewton yes yes sir okay. now for the second one the result is sorry sir yes so why are we taking the distance from g we should take the distance from 4 kilonewton means 1.7 plus 300 no why we are taking the distance from g because we have already transferred the load at G and the moment at G that is why we are calculating distance from this point G in okay. eccentric loading we are already transferring this load and moment to G is it clear yes sir ok so now the next thing is resultant shear stress on bolt P so how will you calculate that resultant uh, shear stress on bolt P first you have to check the direction of load acting right at uh, point P or at bolt P so if you see at bolt P at bolt P and Q both this primary will be in this direction right FP dash and FQ dash both will be in upward direction right opposite to this 4 kN but secondary will be in this direction at P and secondary will be in this direction at Q right why because it should oppose the moment which we have transferred so fp will oppose only if it is in this direction because moment transferred at g is in this direction are you getting what i am saying yes yes sir right so the total force will now be the 20 kilo newton right minus minus 2 right so 18 kilo newton will be the total force at point P. So, if you are having this, uh, what we can say, force with you, right, and this uh, M12 bolt is given, so then you can calculate the shear stress, that is 18 kilo newton upon 5 by 4, 12 square, so this will be your answer. So, what is your answer? 159. 159 megapascal. Yeah, 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 correct. So, this is 159 megapascal. Okay, so this way you can calculate, right? Now, if we go to the next one, then here for the three bolt system shown in figure, the bolt material has shear rate strength 200 mega pascal. Factor of safety is two. The minimum metric uh, specification required for the bolt, right? So what you have to do is you have to calculate uh, this uh, particular diameter of bolt. So, how will you proceed in this case? So, uh, first what is the, uh, the design stress that you can calculate, right? What is the maximum variable stress can be achieved from that this 200 mega Pascal divided by this factor of safety? Right, that is 100 mega pascal that is the stress right now yes, load, load acting is given as 19 kilonewton right so as load is given as 19 uh, kilonewton right and Here actually uh, they have asked for minimum uh, uh, specification, right? So here uh, area can be calculated from this force and the stress, right?
Yes, sir. <coughs> so you can calculate the area. Yeah. So what is the area? Root of four a by by. Sorry. In terms of this, uh, what you can say from stress and this uh, load, you have calculated this area, huh? Okay, sir. Just uh, give me a bit more time. Uh -huh. okay. It will be 19 into 10 raised to 3 Newton upon let us say 100 Newton per mm square. So what is the area in mm square? One nine zero, sir. This is one nine zero zero mm square. So actually, this area is required. Uh, right, total area. This is required, right? So for one bolt, it is a by three, right? For one bolt. Yes. So you can equate this a by three to pi by four d square. So what you are getting? So force should be divided in three. Y area is divided by three. So you can go by that way. If you have divided this force by three, then no need to divide the area, right? While calculating the area of each bolt, if you are dividing this force, this 19 into 10 raised to three by three, right? Then you need yes. not to divide this area. But as we have not divided uh, that force, that is why we are dividing area now. Is it clear? Okay. Sir, the diameter is 8.97, sir. Diameter is 8.97. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is almost equal to 8.97. Right, so it will be around M10. Okay. Okay, so now if we go to the next one, then here also there is a cantilever bracket is bolted to a column right with this PQR bolts the value of maximum shear stress developed in the bolt P. I guess this you can do right because it is very similar to what we have seen just now. Yes. Right? Yes sir. So yes sir. Uh, yes sir. So we can skip this, right? Yes or no? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Okay. So the next is a bolted joint has uh, this four bolts arranged as shown in figure. Cross sectional area of the bolt is 25 m square. Torque is 200 newton meter. Right now, neglecting friction due to clamping force, right? Maximum shear stress in a bolt. So here, as we know, in all bolt there will be same uh, stress. So they have not specifically asked for any particular bolt. You need to calculate what will be the stress. So how will you uh, calculate this? See all the force acting will generate that moment, right? Which will be equated to this uh, particular torque which is applied, right? And as all the bolts are having the symmetry and the equal distance, this 4 PR can be equated to this torque applied, right? So with this, you can first uh, calculate the load. Right, because as you know uh, that uh, this uh, particular distance is given R is 50 mm right as this diameter is 100 mm this R will be 50 mm this torque is given as 200 Newton meter so the very first thing you can calculate is this force that is this 200 Newton meter divided by this 4 into into 10 raised to minus 3. I am converting it into meter because the torque is in meter meter. So you can calculate so thousand. this force Thou is 1000 Newton. 
Yes, sir. So once you have that force, then you can calculate the shear stress. Max, max, maximum shear stress. Yeah. Force by area. So this will be P by. That would be area. Forty megapascal. Yes, it will be forty megapascal because twenty-five <coughs> mm square is mentioned. <coughs> so it will be forty megapascal. So is it clear? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Then uh, the next is here a steel plate is connected to a fixed channel using these three identical bolts A, B, and C carries a load of six kilonewton as shown in the figure. Considering the effect of direct load and moment, the magnitude of resultant shear force uh, right at C. So you have to calculate this magnitude of resultant shear force in kilonewton right on the bolt C. So can you try this? Yes, sir. Yeah. So please try this. See, primary shear force is two kilonewton, right? Because it is total divided by three. R2 is 0 in this case, no? Sorry? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, RB is 0. But you need not to go mm -hmm. for RB. You are asked to find for C only. Sir, primary CR would be 2 kN and the secondary shear would be 15 kN, therefore total result, resultant shear force would be 17 kN. Right? Sorry, sorry? Answer would be 17 kN, right sir? Uh, yeah, correct. Because see primary on this P dash C will uh, P dash C will be six by three, right? That is two, two, three. that would be two. Yeah. Right, and P double <coughs> dash C will be the P E R C upon this R A square plus R B square plus R C square, right? It will give you the answer, correct? Uh, that would be fifteen kilo newton secondary. Six into ten raised to three into E will be two hundred. RC will be 50, right? And hmm. here again, 50 square plus 0 plus 50 square. So, 2 into 50 square, uh, so 6 into 10 is 3. 2 into 50 square, right? So, 2 into this 100, 50, 50 cancel this uh, 50. I guess this two hundred this fifteen and the two hundred and fifty square right. So yeah. it's twelve kilometer. Twelve kilometer, right? The centricity should be 250. Oh, okay, okay. Correct. It is 250 here. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, if it is 250, then 2 into uh, 50 square will be this 50, 50 will go 50 into 200. So, it will be 2.5 here. So, 2.5 into 6 will be 15. Okay, so 15 kilometer and 15 plus 2 will be 17 kilometer. Okay, correct. So all of you are getting the same? Yes, sir. Okay, then let us go for this one. So here, a rectangular steel bar of uh, length 500 mm, width 100 mm, thickness 15 mm is uh, having this uh, 
cantilever to a 200 mm steel channel right using four bolts so for external load 10 kilo newton resultant shear load on bolt b so this you can calculate right so it is trying to sorry you can calculate this i guess primary to directly 10 by 4 2.5 kN right you are asked to calculate at point b right so you can go for this pb dash that is directly 10 by 4 that is 2.5 kN now <coughs> pb uh, double dash you need to calculate right So P B double dash will be this P B R B upon R A R B R C R D. Here this R you need to calculate, right? So 50 root 2. Yeah, that R will be uh, 50 root 2 and it will be equal for all, right? This R. R A R B R C R D all will be equal to this R. That is 50 root 2. So basically it is PE upon 4R, right? So P is 10 kilo Newton. Then E is 400, huh? Yes. And 4 into 50 into root 2. That will be your PB double dash. So what is PB double dash? Fourteen point one foot kilo. Sorry. Fourteen point one foot kilo. Fourteen point one four kilo newton. Okay. So now, but this PB double dash will be acting at an angle, yes. Right. That angle will be forty five degree. right yes sir <coughs> so if this is at a particular <coughs> angle right and the angle is that 45 then you can directly calculate the resultant between two forces right if you don't want to go for those uh, components and all that pb dash square plus pb double dash square plus two pb dash pb double dash cos theta right under root of this is the resultant correct <laughs> so what is this resultant 2.5 square plus 14.14 whole square plus mm -hmm. 2 into 2.5 plus 14. No, no. Approximately. Uh, so would it be 16? So would it be 16? 16, yeah, it is almost 16 kilometers. So what is theta? Theta is 45. Okay. So it is almost coming 16 kilometers. Okay, so today we are keeping it up to here.